Now that you've learned the different methods for approximating definite integrals or approximating area under the curve, it's time for you to know how good your estimations are. Or in other words, how much error could you expect to have? Or what's the, what's the biggest error? How much could you be off by on all of your estimates? So each of the different methods you learn, namely midpoint, trapezoid, and Simpsons, have their own formula, and it's kind of ugly, for the estimates of how much error that approximation could have. So let's look at these. The midpoint error, and you'll notice I've got this in the absolute value symbol. All of these, in fact, have absolute value of the error, and that's simply because uh, your estimate might be an overestimate or an underestimate, and we're not really sure which, so we just say that the error is that, mo that much in either direction. So the error has to be less than or equal to k sub 2. Now k, k is the maximum value your function takes from its second derivative. So k2 is the maximum value of the second derivative of your function. Times b minus a, well we're familiar with b minus a, that's the right end point minus the left end point cubed over 24 n squared. And remember, n is the number of rectangles or the number of subintervals. Trapezoid rule, very, very similar. The error is less than k2 b minus a cubed over 12 n squared. And Simpson's is a little bit trickier. The error is less than or equal to the k4. So that's the maximum value of the fourth derivative of your function times b minus a to the fifth over 180 n to the fourth. And these are all provided that your, uh, your second derivative is continuous and differentiable and defined and all that. So k, these k values basically have to exist. So this is kind of, these are kind of annoying. These are hard to memorize. Usually on a test, th these will be like take home questions usually. Uh, or if you're actually asked to do this, uh, you'll probably be given the formula where the numbers are going to be really easy. Because, man, look at this. Like, the fourth derivative, there's this thing to the fifth over 180. It's just, it's crazy. So usually these are like take-home questions where you can use your calculator and you have plenty of time to work on it. So let's just do an example. The example I'm going to show you with all of this, I'm going to be finding the error for my function, which is one over x on the interval one to two with 10 sub intervals. Now I'm not gonna do the different approximations for all of this. This is gonna take, that would take forever. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you what the error would be for all of these. So here's my function and I'm gonna need to find k2 and k4, which means I'm gonna need the fourth derivative. I'm gonna need to take the derivative four times. And I'm gonna do this using the reciprocal rule because that's really quick. If you haven't seen that before, I've got a video on the reciprocal rule. I'll show you how to do what I'm about to do here. But basically, I'm gonna flip the sign every time. I'm gonna multiply by the exponent in the denominator and then add one to the power of the denominator. If you don't like that, you can write one over x as x to the minus one and then keep doing the power rule. But the way that I do this quickly is you flip the sign, you multiply by the exponent in the denominator, so that's times one, and then add one to the power in the denominator. I'm gonna keep doing that. So if I take the derivative again, I flip the sign, so that becomes positive. I do one times two is two, and then I add one to the exponent in the denominator. I do it again, third derivative, I flip the sign, so that's negative. I do two times three is six, and then I add one to the power in the denominator. I need four derivatives, so I'll do one more. I flip the sign to make that positive. I do six times four is 24, and then I add one to the power in the denominator. Okay, now, what is the maximum value of all these things on one to two? And I really only care about my second derivative and my fourth derivative, right? Because that's why I've got k2 and k4. So I basically want to know what's the maximum value of 2 over x cubed and 24 over x to the fifth 
on the interval one to two. Well, notice if I plug in bigger numbers for X, the denominator would be getting bigger. And if the denominator is getting bigger, well, my function's getting smaller, isn't it? Or in other words, this function is decreasing, which means the smaller value I plug in for X, the larger value my, fun my function would be. So that means that K2 is my second derivative evaluated at one, because one is the smallest thing I can plug in here, and that's gonna give me the biggest number. And if I plug in one, that's two over one cubed, that's just two. And same thing here, since this is a decreasing function always, the bigger values I plug in for x, the smaller it's gonna be, I wanna plug in the smallest thing I can, my k4, is gonna be my fourth derivative evaluated at one in this case. That's 24 over one to the fifth, which is 24. So there is my K2 and my K4. I'm gonna erase this. If you wanna see that again, then you can just rewind, but we got K2 to be two. We got K4 to be, haha, <laughs> just had it. What was that? 24. Okay, and now I can just plug each of these things in. I know, I know what my k2 and my k4 are, I know a is one, I know b is two, and I know n is 10, and I can just plug all of these things into the formula. So let me do the midpoint. So my midpoint error in absolute value is less than or equal to k2, which is two, b minus a, that's two minus one, cubed over 24 times n squared, that's 10 squared. And if you plug that into a calculator, then you are gonna get 0 0.000833. So your error for the midpoint rule, if you did this approximation of the midpoint rule, your error would be, let's see, 10 hundred thousands within nine ten thousandths so that's pretty good for the approximation of a definite integral let's do the trapezoid error so my trapezoid error that's k2 that's 2 b minus a cubed over 12 n squared and if you plug that into a calculator you're going to get 0 0.001 66 six, six, so not quite as good as the midpoint in this case. So depending on what rule you use for different functions, one approximation might be better than another, but in this case, this would be the error, error for the trapezoid rule. One more, let's do the Simpsons error for this. That's K4, that's 24, B minus A, two minus one to the fifth over 180, N is 10 to the fourth. And if you plug that into the calculator, you're gonna get 0 0.000013, so even better. So Simpson's rule is an even better approximation for the definite integral in this case. We're getting within one, two, three, uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, like hundred, hundred thousandth of away from the actual value of the definite integral over this thing. So not too bad, all in all. Well, there's how you do the different error estimates for all of your numerical integration approximations. That's what they call all of these approximations. They call it numerical integration, but you don't need to know that. Uh, so usually, like I said, these are on homework, take home kind of things, or you'll be given the formula, or you'll be given like K2 or K4 or something like that. Anyway, there's a lot of inf information in here, so it, please feel free to watch this again if you need to. I hope you got something out of it. Please tell me if you wanna see more videos like this or whatever new videos you want me to make in the future. And please subscribe, because I put out new videos almost every single day. Thanks for watching, and have an awesome day.